This demonstration covers basic scene viewing and render modes, as well as object selection and search. If you'd like to follow along, open the Mustang model provided under My 3D Models. Now show the following toolbars, 3D Editor, Display, Lights, and Standard, as well as the following panels, Scene and Model Views, and Tools Assistant. The viewport is the scene area containing all model objects as viewed by the main camera. There are several viewing options, including single or split views, which are helpful for aligning objects in a 3D scene. Output Size Preview generates a rendering of the main viewport in a separate window. Looking at the Display Toolbar, Display Renderer selects which graphics driver to use in the viewport. We're using the DirectX driver for this example, but other options are available. Your current driver will appear in the lower right corner of the screen, and you can change display drivers here as well. The next set of menu items are used to set the render modes for the scene or individual objects in the scene. You can also access these features on the display toolbar. Commonly used modes are solid, transparent, solid outline for better object separation, and shaded illustration which is better suited for print. For example, Notice how the windshield wipers are more easily identified in this mode versus solid. Additional mesh type modes are available for mesh editing. The grid will show or hide with various detail, while the scene shadow will project onto the grid if this option is selected. These are also available in the display toolbar. Several lights are available. and the overall brightness can be adjusted as desired. You can also import lights from other sources as needed. Smoothing affects how surfaces are smoothed based on the angle threshold between mesh polygons. This can be set for the scene or objects individually. Another useful shortcut key is the H key, which is used to toggle object visibility, also known as hide or show. To hide an object, select it and press the H key. Pressing H again while the same object is selected will unhide it. If nothing is selected, all objects in the scene will hide or unhide. Additional options are available by either right-clicking the object or by using the Tool Assistant when the selection icon is active. Material toggle settings affect global scene settings and will override local settings. Scene settings affect global details to show or hide basic features of the model.
Output size shows a dashed line around the scene to indicate what will be visible in any of the DE outputs, such as video or images. This is helpful to avoid cropping the scene when rendering to various export formats. The output size settings are also stored in views, and steps can be adjusted at a later time. The View button shows both the typical scene views and their shortcut keys. It is a good idea to learn some of these shortcuts for improved speed. Selecting P, while already in perspective view, will toggle to orthographic view. Model views correspond to saved scene views as shown in the Model Views and Portfolio panel. These saved views retain all rendering, object visibility, and camera settings that can also be accessed through Deep View in other file formats such as PDF, HTML, and PowerPoint, etc. Model views also come in handy to store the visibility of model data as quick reference during animation development. Right-clicking on the viewport title provides alternate access to options already discussed. The background for the viewport is set through the Preferences menu. And this will export with the model to other formats such as PDF or video as an option at that time. The buttons on the display toolbar affect all camera positioning in each viewport. Page layout view shows how the scene would look in print. Orbit controls free movement of the camera. Use of this can result in a tilted model. This can be easily corrected by pressing the shift key while rotating the camera with the mouse. Walk mode allows you to move through a scene from eye level. The red arrow indicates both the speed and direction of the movement, which is useful for smooth building walkthroughs. The turntable provides spin control as if it were on a record player. There is some up-down control as needed. Zoom is the same as dragging the right mouse button up and down in the scene. Pan moves the camera laterally, which can also be accomplished by holding the left and right mouse buttons or by using the mouse wheel if present. You can also use the zoom window to select an area for the viewport. Best fit will cause all visible objects to fill the viewport. This is the same as using the V shortcut key when nothing is selected. There are several options for selecting objects to speed your development. Basic selection includes clicking on the object or group in the scene tree or using the select button to select objects directly. To select multiple objects, use the various lasso options. This can be helpful when creating a new group of objects for animation or rendering. Multi-select or deselect can also be performed either by holding down the control key during selection or using the new tool assistant options such as invert selection or other selection options related to a group. By pressing the F3 function key, you can also search for objects in the scene by name and filter and select objects at the model level based on various characteristics. Note that pressing the select button adds to the previous selection unless cleared.
This concludes this tutorial, and always remember to save your work and rename the file periodically.